Hello. So I finished building this uh, LED matrix kit. This is the, uh, I think you can see it there, the CHA81 nine by nine red LED matrix with row, uh, row and column drivers driven by 4017, one of 10 decade counter chips and 555 timers. Okay, enough waffle. What does it actually do? I've got all the LEDs in there now. Well, yeah, it kind of does this. It kind of generates diagonal lines. Now, of course, it does a little bit more than that. Um, you've got two potentiometers here, X speed, so you can slow down X, uh, and Y speed, so we can slow down Y. Now, when they're both fully uh, up to their maximum setting, then the frequencies of the two 555 timers are roughly the same. They're not quite the same, as you can see, because it's uh, slightly out of sync, and it's quite difficult to synchronize them Oh, having said that, I've just managed it, but uh, it's very easy to get them to go wildly out of sync. It's also quite easy to get them to go back into sync um, with diagonal lines of a different angle. And you can find all sorts of... Oh, now I've got to be careful because there's a third clock in this setup, which is the camera's shutter speed. Um, so I've got to find points of synchronization there's a point of synchronization. Now that looks very different on the camera to how it does in reality, because like I say, there's a, I'm just wondering if I lower the light level, whether I can get this to behave itself a bit better. Right, I've lowered the blinds a little bit. I mean, it seems that the faster speeds do give you the best results, because if I lower the speed on both of these and set it so that I'm getting relatively static uh, diagonal lines. I can see that as a continuous line across there, but on the camera you're seeing it with these gaps which don't actually exist. So yes, this is going to be slightly complicated by that. Um, if I bring these both down, yeah, you're seeing what I'm seeing, which is um, basically a slow tracking diagonal line. Um, and again, you can change the angle of these diagonal lines by increasing X. So X gets a bit faster, it tips over that way, or increasing Y, so Y gets a bit faster, so it's a bit more vertical. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm seeing. Now, the other thing you've got are these two uh, switches, which let you switch between the one microfarad capacitor and the 220 nanofarad capacitor, which um, sort of drops the speed by a ratio, uh, factor of five, approximately. Uh, if I slow down the pots now, you get this sort of waddling diagonal line. Yeah, that's kind of most of what it does. This switch here is just on off, so that doesn't really do anything. Um, this switch is interesting, however, if I press it and hold it, because unfortunately, because of the quality of these switches, this one has failed and it won't stay latched in. Um, at its slowest speed, you can see what's happening here, and that is that the Y counter, um, the sort of row driver, this one, is being triggered by the um, one output of the X counter. So every time it rolls off the end of a line of X, it increments the Y counter. Um, the switch is marked X dash Y switch. So it triggers Y from X. Um, now, in this mode, the Y oscillator does nothing and the switched capacitor does nothing. So it's all working on the X oscillator. So we can speed that up. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm seeing. Let's speed it up even more. And all it is is a raster. Now I'm seeing that as a smooth raster. You're seeing it as a kind of broken up raster. Incidentally, uh, I'll hold that switch in. If I press this um, capacitor selector switch and put it halfway between the two, then um, you get no capacitor because that's one capacitor and that's the other capacitor. If I can get it halfway between the two, you get no capacitor. The 555 runs flat out, which is about half a megahertz, I think, if I remember rightly. And you get essentially a LED tester, which shows that all my LEDs are working. So probably the most interesting thing that this does is you set these to their fastest speed and you get diagonal lines and you can synchronize these diagonal lines 
So the two 555s are running at exactly the same frequency. Hmm, that's giving me an idea. Um, or you can have them out of sync, so you get these sort of uh, out of sync type patterns, things you would see on an old television set if the sync wasn't working properly. Or you can get the sync to come back in and have lines. Uh, now the two frequencies here are a ratio of each other. Um, you could probably work it out. If you worked out that angle and did some trigonometry, you could probably work out the X speed relative to the Y speed and work out uh, what the ratio of oscillators is. But there is another way. Let's have a play with that. And that's by using a Bluetooth speaker. I'm not going to use the Bluetooth. I'm just going to use the AUX input. Let's get this as close to the microphone as I can. If I move the microphone out like that, I should be able to get that to work. Um, oh, that's completely static. Why is that completely static? OK, let's um, put my finger on the uh, ground point there. Listen to pin three of the Y oscillator. I can't hear it, so I've got to find a, a ground. Let's find a ground. Mm. Now, I'm touching points over on the input side of the 555, so I think it's kind of syncing the two 555s together. So let's just touch ground just down here. I need a bit more connection between my fingers and the circuit. Let's get my sponge dampened. OK, so moistened fingers to get the best contact with the amplifier. That's the Y oscillator. And if I bring the Y pot down... So that's an octave. So that's a two to one ratio between X and Y, because that's where they're both the same. I see if I can get both oscillators. But they're they're kind of linked now. <laughs> Let's go for that. Uh, I just want to ground really. What's the other oscillator? Pin three. Ah, here we are. And I'm actually managing to sync them together. That's octaves, you can hear that. Sounds like fifths or thirds. I don't know. I mean, a scope, I suppose, would be uh, more useful, but it is fun to circuit bend this with an amplifier. That's definitely two to one. I think that's four to one. Now, you're not really seeing that as a static pattern because of the interference with the uh, camera's shutter, but I'm seeing it as almost vertical lines. Incidentally, if um, we take the Y, let's take the Y speed up and the X speed up, that gives us two similar frequencies so that we get a completely diagonal 45 degree line. If I take the X speed down, and in fact I'll accentuate it by turning the, uh, changing the capacitor selection, that's the one microfarad capacitor. So you can see that X is very slow, it's tracking visibly, Y is fast, you can't see the uh, the movement of Y is so fast it just looks like a vertical line. Let's turn X up and go for the faster capacitor. Now I'll bring Y down and go for the slow capacitor. Now Y is very slow, you can see the movement of Y. X is fast so you ju it just looks like a solid line. I can slow X down so it's more of a tracking dot but um, the fully accentuated uh, versions where one is very slow and the other is very fast give you either horizontal lines or, and I have to swap the capacitors over, vertical lines. So in terms of what this thing actually does, uh, the CHA81 is possibly a little bit disappointing because it doesn't do a huge amount, but the circuitry is very interesting. 
555 clocks, 4017 um, selectors, which go round a set of nine. Interestingly, these are decade counters, but the last count, Q9, is not used. Well, it sort of is used, but it's linked round to reset. So as soon as Q9 goes high, or within a few hundred nanoseconds, um, the chip is reset and goes back to output Q0, which is the uh, bottom line in the case of Y and the left-hand line in the case of X. I think it all emanates from the bottom left corner. Um, the 505 timers have these two selectable capacitors with these switches. And you also have this mode where you can, I'll slow it down because it's only really interesting when it's at its slowest point, um, where you can get the uh, Y or the row selector to be clocked from a full cycle of the column selector. Uh, but, but actually visually it's not terribly <laughs> interesting in that mode. Um, it has been quite interesting looking at the circuitry. Um, these uh, row drivers, which are MPN transistors, they're all MPN transistors, they're all the same uh, model. Um, these are in common emitter mode, so you've got base resistors and current limiting resistors for the LEDs. Now the MPN transistors down here, the column selectors, are in common collector mode or emitter follower mode. Um, so it's quite interesting looking at how the circuitry works. I can go into that in more detail in another video if you're interested. Um, the uh, Q9 output resetting the chip on this chip is uh, fairly uh, straightforward stuff. But on this one, they've put in a 3K3 resistor. And it does have the effect of slightly elongating the or delaying the reset pulse, which is interesting because in the mode where you press this switch and you get one of the... Uh, counters clocked from a full cycle of the other counter, I, th I suspect they've tried to elongate the Q9 pulse, which is very, very short because all it does is hit reset and reset immediately kills it, um, to get slightly elongate that pulse to work the other uh, counter. But um, yeah, I mean, I can do a full uh, examination of the circuitry of this uh, if you're interested. But that's uh, what the CHA81 LED matrix thing does. I'll leave it there for this video. Cheerio.